the Ogaden in the Horn of Africa. A place so little regarded by Europeans, it scarcely earns a footnote in the history of their empires. When war broke out in the Ogaden, amusement followed in Europe. Where was it? What was it? A desert scrubland. Why kill and be killed for a place like Filto? The answer is simple. For its Somali people, Filto is home. Filto lies in the heart of the Sidamo district. Not desert, but rich grazing land for the camels, cattle and other livestock fundamental to the traditional Somali way of life. Yet, though Somali peopled throughout, it has until recently been ruled by a foreign power, Ethiopia. Until August 1977, when Filto's people, inspired by the now famous Western Somali Liberation Front, rose up to drive the foreigners from their land. In their defeat, the occupation army left little behind them but ruins. The Liberation Front is no new movement in the Ogaden. Only its title is recent. Its fighters and men like them have been resisting foreign domination ever since Ethiopia moved in to colonize the former British protectorate. The British have long gone, and the only Ethiopians left in Filto now are dead. The Ethiopian presence in much of the Ogaden started in the 1890s when Emperor Menelik aligned with Britain, Italy and France to carve the Horn of Africa into colonies and protectorates. Menelik's policy was expansion and his successor's rule in the Ogaden repressive and harsh. <laughs> Filter was, until August the 15th, an Ethiopian garrison town. Strategically located in the highlands, it acted as a military watchdog over activities in the larger community of Negele, 150 kilometers away. Its 1,300 Somali inhabitants were maintained in calculated underdevelopment, dependent for all urgent amenities on distant Negele. Now, free of restraint, they can at last taste self-reliance and develop the land that is rightly theirs. Under Ethiopian rule, Somali emancipation was non-existent. Public meetings of any kind were forbidden. This was the first time in living memory that the people of Filto had gathered openly to discuss their feelings about their own future. What their feelings on winning their freedom are is unmistakable. <laughs>
Gode, an Ethiopian airbase. Across bridges like this, Ethiopian armor could move swiftly to subdue the surrounding countryside. Gode was a military stronghold, yet it was at Gode that the first encounter, reconstructed here, took place between the army of Ethiopia and the lightly armed but fiercely determined Western Somali Liberation Front. attack was a complete surprise. Defeated and demoralized, with no stomach to defend a land that wasn't theirs, Ethiopian troops surrendered by the score. What the Liberation Front had won, they were determined to hold. The land was theirs again. Straddling the fertile Shabeli River, Gode looks prosperous with its fine stone rest houses and Christian churches. But no Muslim Somali was offered one of these, only the elite of the ruler's air base. <laughs> Godet was a beacon to the Ogaden. Once lit, it was not to be stamped out. Least of all in the children, to whom freedom gave the promise of growth without fear in a world now based on equality. Western Somalia's countryside, with its rich vegetation, is ideal grazing for the herds of its nomad population. But these proud people were held in contempt by their rulers, who raided them at will and gave nothing to soften the harshness of their lives. <laughs> Not one road was built in the region, not one elementary school, and grants for land improvement were quite unthinkable. Kalafo, another liberated township. Given minimal aid, this town could prosper, 
but no aid came from Addis Ababa. After years of being colonized, it still lacks piped water and medicine, roads and schools for its non-Ethiopian people. Yet, lying on the Shabele, it should sustain a thriving agriculture. Under Ethiopia, all that thrived here was disease. <laughs> The colonists have gone now. Their prisons, stone villas and churches all lie empty. From the bush to which they were so long consigned, the Somalis have come back into their own. Rich in both livestock and game, Shilabo lies at the very heart of the Ogaden. Since their arrival here in 1947 as part of a United Nations post-war settlement,